Why are you so mad? Hey friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Jules and this is a Christmas in July cozy mystery reading vlog. I really wanted my Santa hat, but it is buried deep in all of my Christmas boxes in the basement. And I have a lot of stuff in there that I can't get to. Let's talk about the books that I'm going to read for this Christmas in July vlog. I have Christmas Cookie Murder by Leslie Meyer. She's one of my faves that I collect, so definitely had to read that because it was the next book on my list. I have Murder at the Christmas Cookie Bake Off by Darcy Hanna. This is book two. Recently in my vlogs, I had mentioned I read books one and three, so now I'm going back to the Christmas one. I have Twelve Slays of Christmas by Jacqueline Frost. This is a Christmas tree farm mystery, and this is book one. This whole series is about this Christmas tree farm. And then the fourth book I'm going to pick up is Saddled with Murder by Eileen Brady. I'm sure you, I don't know if you can see that, but I do not have the physical book for this because it didn't have it. So I just don't know if it's just an ebook only, but somebody recommended it, so I added it to my list. So I don't know which one of these I'm going to pick up first, so I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis of all the books, and then when I decide what I'm going to read, I will let you know. So Saddled with Murder is a Dr. Kate vet mystery. A veterinarian amateur sleuth Kate has her hands full trying to juggle two boyfriends. Two boyfriends? I don't know about that. A thriving practice and a criminal investigation. It's Christmas season and veterinarian Kate Turner is not feeling very jolly. She's overworked, underappreciated, and dealing with two dissatisfied clients. Throw in a very complicated personal life. Yeah, with two boyfriends, you probably do have a complicated life. And Kate's definitely got a case of the holiday blues. To make matters worse, Kate's ex-boyfriend, Jeremy, an ex, two, two boyfriends, and an ex, uh, this is going to be a train wreck. So Kate's ex-boyfriend, Jeremy's mugged and robbed after they have a heated argument in the hospital parking lot. Then, two of her dissatisfied clients turn up dead. All of these events seem like coincidences, but they add up to something much more venomous. And then, um... 12 Slays of Christmas. This says, when Holly White's fiance cancels their Christmas Eve wedding with less than two weeks to go, Holly heads home with a broken heart. Lucky for her, home in historic Mistletoe, Maine is magical during Christmas time. Exactly what the doctor prescribed. Except her plan to drown her troubles in peppermints and snickerdoodles is upended when local grouch and president of the Mistletoe Historical Society, Margaret Fenwick, is bludgeoned and left in the sleigh display at Reindeer Games. Holly's family tree farm. This sounds fun. The covers me. Murder at the Christmas Cookie Bake Off says, with the spirit of holidays wafting through the Beacon Bake Shop, Lindsay thinks she has the recipe for the sweetest Christmas ever, winning the town-wide cookie bake off. Unfortunately, striving for a picture-perfect December in Beacon Harbor is a lot like biting into stale shortbread. Low on staff and bombarded by visits from family, Lindsay can barely meet demands at work, let alone summon the confidence to face fierce competition. Self-appointed Christmas know-it-all Felicia Stewart is determined to take the top spot in the bake-off and she's not afraid to dump a little coal in everyone's stocking to do it. Just as the competition heats up, everything falls apart when the judge is found dead and covered in crumbs from Lindsay's signature cookie. Love it. Okay, and then we have the Christmas Cookie Murder by Leslie Meyer. It says, petty rivalries and feuds have long been simmering, finally come to boil, leaving a bad taste in the mouths of many guests, including Lee Cummings, who accuses Tucker Whitney of stealing her recipe for low-fat, sugar-free cookies. But the icing on the cake is when Tucker is found strangled in her apartment on the following morning. Who could have wanted Tucker dead badly enough to kill her? Despite all of the ingredients for danger, Lucy sets out on the trail of murderer and soon uncovers a Christmas secret best left unwrapped. So this one, obviously, I'm following along with these characters. So like I, the synopsis on the back doesn't really tell you if you didn't, if you hadn't been reading this series, you may not know who these people are. Those are my books. I don't know what I'm going to read. I will let you know when I come back. Hello. I'm back with an update with Mr. Grinch. He's chilling with me. Um, this is something that my husband 3D printed last year. And he never got put back down in the basement. He's literally been chilling in our living room all year. So I decided to bring him up here in my office. So he, my husband 3D printed him in different parts and then put him together, like painted him and then put him together.
So the first book I decided to pick up is Saddled with Murder by Eileen Brady. This is a Dr. Kate Vet Mysteries. I'm pretty sure I already read the synopsis when I went over the books. I am enjoying this so far. I'm 30% in. So right off the bat, it starts off at the vet's office. They're having a work Christmas party and it makes me kind of miss having work Christmas parties and stuff like that. I've worked from home for like 17 years. <laughs> so like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I am my work. Like, I don't, I guess I could throw myself parties, but I don't have, like, you know how when people have birthdays or there's like holidays and you have to work around the holidays, you have little parties and Christmas. I don't have any of that. <laughs> so it kind of made me miss that. But anyway, it was fun. So one of the, one of the workers there brings a, which I'm sure everybody's probably seen this before, but it is like a fake cat litter cake. So it's like a cake that you make and then you make it look like you know look like cat litter and so like you use like tootsie rolls to like make the turds and stuff <laughs> anyway so i was cracking up at that and so one of the co-workers is recording like this cake and everybody you know trying the cake and then she asks like what their what their christmas wishes are she said let's go around and ask what our christmas wish is for the vet's office and so one of them's mentioned that he wishes that the the dog's poops were like smelled like flowers or something because I guess he does like all the poop cleanup and any some others had mentioned stuff and then the vet said she's like well I wish that the people that skip out on their bills would just disappear and she didn't say who but then like somebody in the background was like yeah that nah, nah, and like mentions off a few people which funny enough I was like who can skip out on their vet bill like I wish but I was at the vet's office like one of the last couple times I've been there paying all my I'm just bleeding money to this vet's office but so the last time I was there I was like here's my car payment <laughs> just kind of joking because it was so expensive and uh I don't remember how she said it. She's like, well, at least you're paying your bill. And I was like, what? <laughs> and she said that like they're, they have people that like skip out on their bills. And I'm like, who does that? <laughs> like, who takes their animal to the vet and then's like, oh no, that's too much. I'm just not going to pay it. And then like leaves, like you can't leave without paying, but they just straight up walk out without paying. I'm like, holy moly. Never, never ever heard of that. Anyway, back to my, back to my update. So Next thing you know, one of those people that was mentioned in this video dies. And then her friend who works there with her had said, don't get mad at me, but I uploaded that video on the internet. And like, so everybody heard her say that she wished these people would disappear. Now she didn't say specifically who the people were. She just wanted the people that didn't pay their bills to disappear. And then somebody else in the background was rattling off names. And now those people are like dying. And then she has kind of like a creepy hermity guy that lives like next to her at the vet. So I guess her home and the vet is kind of like all very close. And so one of her neighbors is kind of a weirdo. And then her ex-boyfriend ends up getting attacked. And so she lets him stay with her while he recoups. And now her other friend or on and off guy has come back. And so the two guys are like, this is getting kind of weird. Like everything that's happening to these people, like kind of is revolving around you. So I think they're going to come to find out that obviously somebody is either going to try and frame her for something or somebody is like, taking out people that have a beef with her for some reason. I don't know why. But anyway, I'm having a good time with it. And I'm loving all the animal talk because I'm a huge, huge, huge animal lover. I used to volunteer at an animal shelter. I also used to foster puppies and kittens. Like I had to bottle feed them anytime babies came in the shelter that didn't have a mom or if, you know, they weren't t feeding off of the mom. Um, so I did that. So. Animals are a huge part of my heart and I love them. So I did look and realized that there's only three books in this series 
Now, the last one that was published was in October of 2023. So it's possible. Maybe. Maybe we'll have more. That's my thoughts for now. We will come back. Or at least I will come back. I don't know if he'll be with me. I'll come back when I have um, probably my final thoughts on this. Because I don't know what there would be much more to update before. So I'll probably just come back with my final thoughts and ratings on this one. with an update for Saddled with Murder. Uh, this is the vet mystery one I did. I finished this a few days ago. Totally forgot to come back and update you guys, my bad. So I ended up giving this one four stars. So I had a good time with this one. There were a lot of like little subplots that were fun with different customers and their animals um, and her checking them out and taking care of them. And there was a little twisty at the end. Um, she got herself in a little bit of a predicament. So anyways, a good time. I enjoyed it. There's only three books in this series so far, so I will definitely continue in it. So the next book I'm picking up is Christmas Cookie Murder by Leslie Meyer. Love Leslie Meyer. I did already go over the synopsis of this at the beginning of the vlog, which for me was a while ago for you. It was a few minutes ago. So you should still remember. Um, but this one's not very long. This is only 230 pages. And there's a couple recipes in the back. Maybe I'll make a recipe. I don't know. And then the last part of the book just has a little synopsis. Um, has the first chapter of the next, her next two books. So anyway, so I'm going to start this one and I will come back when I have some thoughts on it. And then I did want to show you a project that I think I'm going to work on because it is Christmas themed. So this is a, the back of it is seen better days. This is a nativity scene that my grandparents, all the little peoples are just, are just hanging out in there. I remember this as a child. This was like always out every Christmas, but it is seen better days. So I'm going to repurpose it. So I think like all the stuff on the top, like all the mossy stuff came off. So I'm going to put that on there. Like the people are seen better days. So I'm going to repaint them. Like his knee is like jacked up, but this little angel like goes on top like that. So anyway, the little, the little guys could, could use some, use some touch up. So I think I'm going to try and paint them. If they really have kind of crap paint jobs to begin with, <laughs> like, and honestly I could keep it just looking like this and it would still mean the same to me because you know, I was a child. We'll see. We'll see what I can do with it. I will come back when I have some updates for you. Hi. Hello. I read this whole book and didn't come back and give you any updates. Okay, so first of all, in my defense, this book is not that long. Uh, and secondly, like, I just burned through it and didn't realize I had not updated you. <laughs> so, this is the seventh book in the series. So, I'm already invested in all these characters. So, I don't feel like you could pick this up and read it as a standalone. Because, there's, you know, they do continue to add characters, but, like, the relationships of these people, there's a lot of characters in here that are mentioned that I know their backstory from previous books. So obviously I loved this book because I love the series. So the book starts off right away with a big cookie exchange and I love cookie exchanges. So Lucy ends up, Lucy's friend used to hold the cookie exchange and she didn't want to do it anymore. She was tired of doing it. So Lucy decides she's going to hold the cookie exchange at her house because everybody's looking forward to it. Basically they all make cookies. They bring them, swap cookies. Everybody, y'all know what a cookie exchange is. So, so her friend has a new employee that works with her at the daycare. So it's a new younger coworker that has come and she brings her to this cookie exchange. And apparently there's a little tiff going on between one of the other ladies at this cookie exchange and this girl. And then, um, 
Also, the parents are like, so they're at the age, like her son's getting ready to go to college, which when I started this series, he was in like early high school, maybe. You know, of course the ladies are all like, oh, my, my kid's going to this school or my kid's going to this school. And so you just have that like kind of the whose kid is better type thing going on. And Lucy's just like, okay, this is ridiculous. <laughs> So she's like trying to get everybody to not talk about that and move on to something else. Obviously, there's a murder. Obviously, Lucy's going to help try and do a little investigating and figure out who did it. In the midst of this, we just have the normal like Christmas things going on. You know, they'll go Christmas. They go Christmas caroling or they go to like a town event. Um, all the just fun Christmas stuff that you can have. There was a big fire that happened in one of their buildings. Um, it didn't have anything to do with the murder, but then like there was just kind of like a little side story that happened with that with some of the um, firefighters. So it was really interesting, but just like the, the way the community comes together in the time, you know, like of a crisis and things that affect all of them in the community. So I loved that part of it. So yeah, I overall just had a great time with this. So. Sorry about the no midway check-in, but I love this book and I gave it four stars. I will always recommend this author. One of my favorites. So I didn't end up baking any of the recipes. There was only a couple in the back of the Leslie Meyer book, but I did bake cookies this past weekend, but I just didn't record it. <laughs> my kitchen was a mess, y'all. Like there was stuff everywhere. I was not home much this weekend. So I had the boozy book fair thing Saturday and then Sunday I had to go to the grocery store. I had to meal prep. I went to the lake to swim at my cousin's house, came back. I had a live show book discussion on Gwen's Patreon. And so I just didn't have time. I wanted to make these cookies, but I didn't have time to clean the kitchen <laughs> beforehand. So I did not record it, but I made fruity pebble cookies. Um, and a coworker of my husband's loves those cookies. So I decided to make those. My daughter, and I used to run for our Girl Scout troop. We used to run for like two or three years we did it. It was a mother-daughter cookie exchange. It was so much fun. We had so many people attend it. So obviously, same thing with the cookie exchange. You make so many cookies, you take so many cookies. And we literally just had this huge table. It would just run down the whole middle of the thing um, full of cookies and everybody would get a number and then we would do a voting. So we did like a favorite, like best looking cookie, you know, best tasting cookie um, because everybody could get their cookies and they could eat them if they wanted or not, whatever. And then we had like craft things for them to do. We had little games for them to play and it was just an all around fun time. Anyway, I made cookies. That, that was, that was what I was getting at. <laughs> so if you do want to try to start this series, her first book in the series is also a Christmas mystery. So this is a really old copy. <laughs> so they have different designs on the cover. So if you go to buy this, it may not look like this, but um, Mistletoe Murder is book one in her series and it's really good. So then the next book I'm picking up for this vlog is, and I'm going to tell y'all right now, I have three days left to read two of these, my last two books. And I know I can do it. I know I can do it. I'm going to probably finish this one at least maybe today or tomorrow and then pick up my last one. So these are the two books I have left. I have 12 Slaves of Christmas and I have Murder at the Christmas Cookie Bake Off. So I went ahead and started um, 12 Slaves of Christmas and I'm already 25% through. I love the whole Christmas tree farm. Like the way it's like the way it's set up, all the descriptions about all the fun stuff they're doing and they do, they hold reindeer games. So that's why it's 12 Slaves of Christmas because um, they do like a... 12 days of reindeer games type thing at this Christmas tree farm. And so I'm just loving all the Christmas. It has tons of Christmas vibes. I do love everything about Christmas, the baking, the Christmas music, just the Christmas movies. We literally start watching Christmas movies on Thanksgiving and all month long, every night of the week, we will watch a Christmas movie at least one. So I also love that the murderer, happens in this like right off the bat right off the bat and I love that in cozies and I know sometimes they wait a little bit so that you can get like more backstory on your characters or whatever but sometimes I just love to go right into it let's just get right into it and start start sleuthing so uh so Holly as it said 
Holly was supposed to get married in Christmas, broke up with her man. So she's back home and she's working at the Christmas tree farm. And a body is found in the Christmas tree farm. And it's somebody who several people could have done it. <laughs> so uh, she is trying to help take the suspicion off of her father because he is one of the main suspects because he had words with this person as well did other people. And since it happened at the Christmas tree farm, they had to close down the Christmas tree farm. And so she's trying to talk to the cop and she's like, hey, this is my family's livelihood. We, you know, they bank on this huge part of getting all this money during this time to help get them through, you know, the rest of the off season. So she's like, we can't be closed. She's going around shopping at all these stores and asking questions, but she's like, I feel bad, like not buying anything. I feel like I have to buy something. So she's like buying all this stuff. So she has like bags of stuff as she's just asking these people all these questions to try and figure out if they had a beef with this person or if they knew what she was up to or why she was, you know, acting the way she was acting. So the person who was killed is in the historical society and apparently is causing a lot of problems with people and just being very particular on things that they can and can't do and the laws of things and trying to, you know, threaten to find them if they don't change things. And anyway, so I am enjoying it so far. It is a good time. So I will be back. I promise with some updates midway ish before I finish this. Good morning, friends. I thought I would come in real quick this morning with an update on this while I get my coffee ready. Um, I'm, I'm burning through this book. So I didn't want there to be a potential of me not updating you, um, you know, like I did the last time. So I don't know what it is about Christmas cozies. I can just fly through them. I just love them. Um, I'm about 60% through this. I am still loving all the Christmas stuff and, and the reindeer games, you know, they were able to open their, they were able to open their farm back up. And so this morning I am using brown butter chocolate chip cookie. I've not had this one before. So hopefully it is good. Usually I don't do creamer very often in my coffee unless it's iced coffee. I usually like my morning coffee just black hot black coffee. <laughs> so anyway, let's give it a taste real quick. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. So there's a guy she went to high school with who is a reporter now and she doesn't remember him, but he says he went to high school because I guess he was like a few years younger than her. So she doesn't really remember him, but he remembers her obviously. And they're kind of now working together. She, at first she didn't want to talk to him at all because she's like, you just want to talk to me because you want information on what, on like finding the body and like what happened. But now I guess she's like, he's kind of talked her into like kind of maybe working together to try and figure out what happened. And then the police officer is new to town so he did not grow up there. He moved in thinking he could find a nice, quiet place, you know, to live. And turns out <laughs> now he found a body. Um, obviously, they. it seems like they both of the men might kind of have an interest in her. But obviously, she literally just broke up with her fiance because she was supposed to be getting married. So she's not really interested in finding love again <laughs> right, right away. Um, but this detective is so sweet. Like, it's so funny because like most detectives in the Cozy Mystery series, and I say most, but like half of them, half of them are either going to be love interests or they start out being like at each other's throat, kind of like stay out of my way type thing and then end up liking each other. This guy is just very nice from the get go. And he's just like, I'm very concerned about you. I want you to stay safe and, and please stop looking into things. This is my job. Let me do my job. I want to keep you safe. Like he's just so sweet. Um, yeah. So I'm loving that. And then the reindeer game, all the days and the competitions that they're doing, it's just such a fun time. So Obviously, because she is asking a lot of questions, she's had a couple of like threats. So people have left her like little 
stay out of the, uh, keep your nose in your own business type of threats. So anyway, that is where I'm at. I'm going to finish this today and then I will be back with my final thoughts on it for you. I'm back. <laughs> I finished this book. It was so sweet. It made me tear up at the end. And like the relationship forming between her and the sheriff. It's so sweet. Ah, so um, I love in here that Holly also makes like Christmas themed earrings. And that everyone's like, um, when she wears them, they're like, oh, your earrings are so adorable. Where'd you get them? And she's like, There's, they're mine. I made them. And everyone's like, you should sell them. And so she starts making earrings to sell and I'm like I love that I love Christmas earrings I love crafty stuff and just the continuation of all the games that they have and just the fun like this is just the epitome of a fun Christmas gatherings it was such a good time um so yeah at the end obviously um you know the killer comes after her to shut her up and uh because she figures it out and, um, yeah, it, it was just a good time. So I am going to give this, I was on the fence. I was, it was reading like a four star pretty much the whole time. I was like, I'm going to give this four stars. But then at the end and just the, the heartfelt relationships, like the, the way they're forming the relationship. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm it's, it's probably 4.5. Uh, but I may round it up to five on Goodreads just because it was just a good time. I definitely, I mean, in my mind, I'm like, how many more murders can we have at this Christmas tree farm? But I'm assuming they're not all going to happen on the farm. We'll see. But I am intrigued to see where the relationship goes and continue on. Her parents are the sweetest. Um, they just had a great relationship, the mom and the dad. And yeah, I loved everything about this book. So I would definitely recommend picking this up this coming Christmas or winter time. Um, I think it will get you definitely in the mood for Christmas. This would be one you could even read like right around Thanksgiving. It'll give you all those Christmas feels that you need to get you ready for the holidays. And then the last book I'm picking up is Murder at the Christmas Cookie Bake Off by Darcy Hanna. This is book two. I had skipped over this one. I've already read books one and three. I love this series. I love these characters. So I am excited to get to this. And I have a feeling that I'm going to burn through this one pretty quick too. So crossing my fingers that I remember to come back with a midway update for you guys. I'm back with a midway check-in. Um, I'm 50% through. So we start off with um, Lindsay at her bake shop. She's baking Christmas cookies. There is one of her friends comes around and has this other like shop owner with her. And they're talking about how, um, they're trying to bring in more, you know, business and Christmas revenue. And this store owner actually has like a year round Christmas shop. And she's like, Oh, she's like, we think that we need to have a like a Christmas cookie contest. And she's like, and how it's going to work is, it doesn't even give her an option to do it, just says how it's going to work is all the shop owners have to make a cookie and give free samples out to people. And then the customers are going to choose, they're going to vote for like their favorite cookie. And then like the top four people, like the top four store owners will go into a Christmas cookie bake off. And they're going to bring in this like famous um, food critic who has like a TV show. And she's like, okay, so we, so we don't have a choice. We have to do it. Like she's already taking Christmas orders for people. And then she's just like, no, you have to. And so some of the other store owners are calling her and saying, I need to place an order for six dozen cookies. And she's like, is this your signature cookie order? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we don't have time to do that. And so this, some of the store owners don't even want to participate, but this person who's in charge of this is like, yes, everybody has to do it. And she's just bossy and I don't like her. So Lindsay is taking these orders. So she's stressed out because she doesn't have a baking apprentice at the moment. Like she's hired some people to help her and they haven't worked out for whatever reason. So she's like stressed and she's putting all this pressure on herself. So Lindsay has put an ad out 
nobody's responded and then all of a sudden she's in the shop late one night by herself and she's baking and she forgot to lock the door and somebody comes in and it's like totally a Mary Poppins situation. This lovely lady comes in and is like, I'm answering your ad for this, uh, you know, assistant baker. And she's like, okay. like <laughs> She's like, I need all the help I can get. And then next thing you know, she comes in the next morning and like the entire kitchen is clean. All these cookies are made like, and, and she's like, how did you get in? Did I give you a key? And she's like, yeah, you gave me a key last night. And I'm like, did she? So she just totally Mary Poppins her with her baking and all this stuff. And she just seems like a peach, but I'm like, mm, maybe she's, maybe she's not. So somebody came in and stole all her cookies from her sample plate. Like three ladies came in and they like took off with her cookies so that if there's no cookies, then people couldn't taste her cookies. Then they couldn't vote for her cookies. And then she wouldn't win to get into the bake off, which she did end up getting in there anyway. So She's in the cookie Christmas bake off and yeah, somebody gets murdered. Her and her boyfriend, who's also her neighbor, found the body. So it wasn't just her. <laughs> and her mom and dad are back in town and her best friend's in town because they were coming in town for Christmas. And her mom is starting this um, like matching clothing line with, so like, like coats for you and your dog. So she's making like a dog line anyway. So she brought, uh, a coat for her dog to wear and to parade him around and, and promote the business. Anyway, it's, it's a pretty good time. I'm having fun with it. Um, so yeah, that is my update. Now I'm at, I'm just at the part where the murder or the body was found about 40% into the book. And so now they're just doing some investigating, asking questions. And of course this, girl that I don't like knew the person that died. I think it's too obvious that she would be the killer, even though I don't like her. <laughs> so I don't think it's her. But anyway, I will come back when I have my final thoughts and rating on this for you. Back with my thoughts and final rating for this book. But first, let's appreciate the Santa sweatshirt. Is he not the cutest? <laughs> So I had a really good time with this book. I enjoyed all of the sleuthing that they were doing and the just all the Christmas tradition things that they have or that they're creating. I did not guess who the killer was. For like a hot second, I kind of was suspicious about this person, but ultimately did not guess that it was this person that did the killing. So overall, I had a really good time with it. I'm giving this four stars. Maybe more of a 3.5, but I'm rounding it up to four for Goodreads. Definitely, like I said, I'm still going to continue in this series. And I'm excited to continue on the journey with Lindsay and her family. So to recap, all of the books were four stars, except for the 12 Slaves of Christmas. I did give that one five stars, which was kind of more maybe a 4.5, but it was also rounded up. So overall, all of these books were fantastic Christmas books. And I highly recommend picking them up this winter. If you have not read any of them, they are all very good. So I had a great time this month doing Christmas in July. It actually got me ready for the holidays. Not that I'm wishing my year away by any means at all, but um, I'm definitely ready to get out of this heat because the past couple weeks here in the Midwest have been hot, hot. <laughs> so um, I'm definitely ready for it to cool off. Not that I'm wishing winter to be here soon because well, let me tell you if I could have a season of fall for like three months I would embrace all of that. So please subscribe to my channel if you are not already and thank you for everyone who is here already and supporting me. I appreciate every single one of you. So let me know in the comments below what is your favorite Christmas tradition if you celebrate Christmas and if you made it this far in the video please leave me a candy cane emoji or really any Christmas emoji if you'd like to show me that you made it all the way to the very end with me and I appreciate you for sticking around and until my next video friends be yourself be awesome be kind bye